The Titanfall games are all about the dichotomy between Titan and Pilot. These contrasting hulking mechs and agile foot soldiers are both fun to play as for different reasons, but I want to talk about the pilots and how satisfying their movement system is. There's obviously a big focus on stuff like wall running and sliding with this half of the game, but what's apparent is how the developers at Respawn actually built the title around this rather than simply slapping it on. For example, unlike some shooters in which a slide move feels like a real afterthought, here it gives you some serious distance, turning it into an actually viable method of bum-rushing enemies while making yourself harder to hit. Perhaps even better is the generous aiming zone you get here. You can pull a full 180 while sliding if you're fast enough, both because of how long it lasts and the fact the game doesn't keep you in a rigid aiming zone. So not only is the slide useful for getting into cover or strictly forward offensive maneuvers, but is a useful way to move with speed in one direction while firing in another, keeping the pace of the combat snappy. However, probably the best thing about the slide is that, similar to the wall run, it gives a considerable boost in speed to start before gradually dialing it back to a snail's pace. Now on the surface, this is just great for evading fire. Get spotted by an enemy and slam the gas for a precious few extra shots before you cash in your chips. But by starting off high and slowly decreasing as the move starts to drag, there's an incentive not only to use these to shoot off for a second, but to chain multiple short boosts. You want to constantly be pacing it, effectively turning that initial boost into your default speed. The way you can buffer slides for when you land by tapping the button in midair isn't just helpful to mid-level players looking to get a bit of distance on their landing. High-level players can combine this with rapidly bouncing off walls to keep their momentum and bunny hop their way across the map. Thankfully, most of the maps are designed around this. They're not just flat planes that respawn expect everyone to enjoy space hopping across. They're at their best when they pack the things with all manner of objects to wall run or jump off, vertical layers to add some diversity to the combat, and bottlenecks only pilots can squeeze through to get the drop on these iron giants. Remember, the slide sets you in a linear direction, and unless you've mastered mid-air turning, with a bit of bunny hopping you'll be going in that one direction fast, so any possibility to divert that one-way journey is appreciated. But it's not only flat walls, just about anything at least waist high can act as a short wall run surface so players can get really creative with how they ricochet from A to B. The newly added campaign thankfully adheres to this in large part too. A lot of the environments not only require a deal of shooting skill to make your way through, but parkour shenanigans are encouraged with the level design. Many are clearly composed in ways that can be rushed through for experienced players, while others are sprawling arenas that loop in on each other, offering multiple points of entry depending on how wacky players can get with their free running. On the multiplayer side, you have little gadgets like the grapple, a sort of easy access tool for making your way to a high up wall run or onto a titan for the aptly named rodeo attack. With how easily this would negate all those other cool mechanics though, it needs its drawbacks, most obviously with the delay in sending it off to actually getting moving and how it starts very slow and then builds up speed rather than the other way around. This ensures that not everyone just hookshots their way around the map. The most effective method for keeping momentum is managing to combine all these mechanics rather than just using one by itself. Unfortunately, the game holds on to a few modern FPS tropes I'm a little less than keen on. The majority of weapons are essentially hitscan, which for a game about moving fast and avoiding fire is a bit of a missed opportunity. Titanfall 2 does seem to occupy that middle ground between, say, Call of Duty and Quake, and that's fine. Perhaps managing all these mechanics while approximating distances and projectile speed was considered a bit taxing, especially with a controller, which is understandable. And in all fairness, there are a few pretty neat projectile weapons in the game, so I can't be too hard on respawn for this one. What I find more annoying is the sprinting, an issue I feel plagued so many games now for so little reason. Sure, higher level players will find ways to zoom around while popping off shots, but for those not quite up there, your movement speed is brought to a screeching halt, and that does kill the pace. What's doubly weird is there's even an unlockable perk for getting around this. I've got a question why that wasn't just made the default. Also, unlike, say, Doom, in which you can strafe as your top ground speed applies in every direction, sprinting is strictly relegated to full forwards movement. You could argue that this helps further the skill divide, incentivizing learning those rad techniques, but with the wall run and slide already having a higher speed than sprinting, I have to wonder why the slowed down movement upon firing is there at all. But I really should stop there because I find it hard to be too negative about this game. It came off as a lovely surprise. Having played games with some similar mechanics, I wasn't expecting to find so much fun in Titanfall 2's mobility just because of some seemingly minor tweaks. Keep in mind I suck at this game. I'm just shit, there's no two ways about it. But there's clearly a skill ceiling here, and that's what drives me to keep playing. Respawn have really nicely designed this game around these mechanics rather than haphazardly throwing them in. It's kind of like a mirror's edge with guns, or at least guns that don't feel disgusting. Pilots get the most out of their time by not just using one technique, but multitasking.
game. Combining everything into one smooth experience to get an edge over enemy pilots as well as these colossal washing machines. In a game that's roughly 50% about mobility, designing for that mobility matters, and in that sense I'd say Titanfall 2 definitely hits the mark. Oh, yeah.